was serialization. Serialization is means one thing following after another, and it seems to have uh, certain patterns. And some of the stars and the actors are basically the same. So it's a serial. It's something that you can turn on. It used to be weekly, but now you can binge certain programs. You can wait till they all come out, and you can watch them all in one day or a day and a half. Uh, so this is serialization. I, I call it that because um, this thing about uh, longevity, this thing about uh, endurance, uh, this thing about uh, certain patterns and habits developing over and over again, and this idea of redundancy is a real thing for us. Uh, I just got a call on the phone a little while ago, and it was from us, I guess it was an insurance. So the lady said, uh, uh, well, I'm da -da 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 -da, so and so, and I just want to talk to you about uh, uh, so Basically, it was about insurance. They said, she said, uh, I just want to ask you uh, two things. One is your age and who are you insured by? I said, I'm insured by God. I didn't say a lot like that, you know. It was, I was using, you know, a word that you could. Uh, Kind of mess with. I said, I'm insured by God. So she waited a hot second and hung up. And I laughed so hard it was that you wouldn't believe it. Uh, and I was laughing because it was the things that we've been dealing with over a long period of time, they couldn't happen unless you were were under our laws protection. In other words, the full force of the United States government has clearly been working against us. I mean, specifically, daily, over and over again. And we, are, we know that. Not only we know it, but everybody else that comes around. Everybody else knows that. All the groups and all the organizations, they already know that. And they know, uh, they know it in California. And they've been saying for decades that I think the FBI is up in there, you know. Well, the FBI and everybody else is up in here. And so this thing about uh, being protected by Allah is correct. And we don't go by any illusions like uh, they have illusions in America about I have a right to privacy. Well, we realize we don't have a right to privacy. And that's a big step. When you come to that conclusion and practice and function, and you realize you don't have no privacy, and whatever you do and whatever you say will be scrutinized, and you might be so deprivatized that you may be rigged from the inside out. You don't have no privacy. And that's a big step. When you come to that conclusion that you don't, you don't have, no, you don't have no personal life, but that's a big step in uh, personal evolution. When you realize that no, 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 you don't have no privacy, nor do you have a right to privacy, and you eventually evolve to the point to where you don't want no privacy. Why? Because you have to study. What will you have to fight? What is your struggle? And in our struggle, this is a struggle. Uh, and by the way, we slap in, I'll say it in, in good old English, we slap in the piss out of uh, whoever's going against us. They're getting slapped around like ball, base, not balls, like this, like bums. They, they're slapped around like bums because uh they kicked in at the wrong time. 
So in this evolution, we realize we don't have a right to privacy, and we have not had a right to privacy. We don't even remember when we had a right uh, or when that was practiced. It, it was least before 66, because after 66, uh, we were in the public domain. I mean, your name is in the public domain, and your life is in the public domain. But nowadays, uh, for the last 40 something years, 50 years, it's been clearly in the public domain. So to use this public display of your private life as the means to your freedom and liberation is a godsend. So you don't have a right to privacy. So now what I'm going to do, what you're going to do, what they're going to do, you're going to use that for your to reach your nirvana type. You're going to use it. Uh, each people have to use whatever covering or whatever protection that they have. They dropped so much Agent Orange in Vietnam because it had so much covering. Uh, the jungle covered everything, and they wanted to defoilize everything, which they did. It's still getting together now. Uh, and not only they kill a lot of them, they, they kill a lot of their own troops with that Agent Orange. So use this public display of your private life as a means for your freedom and liberation. Because you realize you don't have no a public right to privacy. So you have, that is your battle space. That's your battlefield. Okay. So the technique for success is to understand what is your battle space? What, what are you fighting in? What? What period, what time, what area, what are you? And that's yours. Is that they would call it you giving up your privacy. But you're not giving up your privacy. Your privacy is what's called a sacrifice. It's like a sacrifice play. You make a butt to get on first base and then you steal the other bases. If you're Jackie Robinson, of course. Right? So uh, a bunt is a sacrifice play, you know, and it goes so slow that by the time the pitcher squeezes in on the ball, the guy from third base then came, then came on. And so they, they're studying the battlefield and they see, what am I going to hit? Listen, man, we got the base loaded, we got this, that, another. And all we need is one run. We can get run one run in. So I'm gonna butt. And that's what they tell him, butt, butt. And he bunts and he brings in the home. And they win the game. For us, the sacrifice play is our privacy and how to manage it. We've been doing it so long that it, it uh, it's it's a natural part of you. They, and <clears throat> battlefield commanders are, are always warned. And just don't use the same policy over and over again, or your enemy will adopt to your tactics. So you can't use that over and over again. But if you narrow down boss man's uh, methods of attack, he might you might exhaust his, uh, his, you can exhaust, he thinks he has many things to work with, but he has a bundle of things to work with. So you want to exhaust him. And that's the way you exhaust him. You stick with him long enough. 95% of ability is stickability. It don't make no difference what nobody say. Real ability is the ability to hold on, to stick around 
We've said that for decades and we mean it. The longer you stick around, the longer you, uh, the battle space is, is, uh, is adjusted. Uh, this Friday, one of the brothers came to Juma with a new truck. The same brother that I took the car over and is supposed to fix the car. And uh, three months ago, I told him, well, the car is out there. Yeah, I said, the car is out there. He had a new truck, though. And uh, so uh, I said, yeah, uh, it's out there. You can come fix it or you can leave it out there. It doesn't make no difference. But the thing is, is that uh, he came by here for a certain reason. For display or to get that question like uh, they sent me something on the uh, on the internet. This is such and such auto. It's been several months. We just called and a check to see, not calling, however they text us, whatever, to see how everything is going. Well, uh, he wanted me to say, well, the car is not hell. I put water in it and it runs out just like it's been doing. I didn't send him that. I said, you can come over and fix it. And so you stall long enough, and then pretty soon they send somebody by. They yeah, send somebody by. They got to the same person that's supposed to fix it. They come by, and uh, that stickability, the ability not to panic and not to get, if this would have happened 40 years ago or more, uh, you see the police sitting out in front of your house, you get nervous and you get mad. You get all that stuff. It don't make, now you manage them. And we know we manage them. Uh, I went by the dentist's office this morning. Well, I went by Friday after Juma. Actually, I I went a week late because I I. I bit into one of those doggone uh, dates that was a seedless date. But every 100 of them have a date seed in there. So I bit into it and it broke my tooth up. There's no problem. Now, my dentists are 100% the police, and they think they're Negro dentists right around there. And uh, you could tell when they get piped into the system. You could tell. They they give off the, you know, they, they well, anyway, it's a long story. But they give off an air that we've been piped into the governmental system. We know who you are. We know. Uh, but they put it act. They don't know. That's no problem. So I went by there today. And uh, Friday, the lady said, well, we're going to take two of your teeth out over here. So I, when I went by this morning, I said, uh, I don't need but one taken out, you know, and you could take that out. Uh, and I said, they're not, uh, they're not frozen together where you got to take them both out, right? No, 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 because that means they would have did it if it was like that. Uh, okay. Uh, would you just wait a little while? I done changed this thing from uh, pulling two teeth to no. I never was going to pull two teeth because it's only one that's loose. And I, I'm at a certain age, and if you keep pulling teeth pretty soon, you won't have no more. They wanted to pull a tooth and put some others in something other. So I, I ain't going to do that. No, no, no. I'm, I'm so old, I don't need, I keep what I got. And uh, if they, they're going to get, uh, they will let it stay in there. They, they, that thing you got there in the last 10 years, so hell, I'll be 87 years old then. You think I care anything about teeth after the 87 or 90 or 100? You know. So anyway, Uh, okay, so now they got to call back and check what to do. Because boss man had told them to do certain things. 
Okay, maybe they're going to rewire it, uh, put something in there, you know, a signal. That don't make no difference what it is. So I wait around there about an hour and a half, and I go outside. I say, I got to go outside because I feel there's something coming on. I say, you know, there's temperature in here. Just got a little moisture in the air. I say it pops off a little, it's a, I call it a government itch. I'm telling I said, I get a little government itch, so I'm going to go outside. I said, all right, yeah, I'll just go out there and sit in there. You know, there's no, it's, it's like this nice, and it's uh, no humidity, no humidity and all of that. So uh, uh, after about an hour, I went back in, and I said, well, uh, uh, well, we checking on them streams. We got this. I said, uh, now, now I know, and I I done told the new girl sitting behind the desk. I said, yeah. I said, did you check my name on the Internet thing now to see what it say about me? You know, I said, you can just check Clarence Reams and it'll come up, Abdul Aleem Musa, and then it'll go into. I said, now they're lying, but it'll give you enough to get a feel of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, well, the internet was down, and I said, oh, no problem, no problem. So uh, you already know what you're going to find out. Now, the, the dentist lady is, is is just a nice, crooked lady. They And they, no, no, like uh, the government tell them do this, and they do it happily because they get, uh, they, they want to fix your whole mouth, take this out, take that out, and they want to do this. And I said, no, we're not doing that anymore. We just uh... Anyway, so I had a nice, interesting day uh, messing around with them. They know who I am. I know who they are. I know the environment that I'm in. When I get up in the middle of the night and I said, let me take a stretch. When I walk out the door, wherever it is, there, that doesn't make no difference. Somebody is going to be, it doesn't make any difference. That's because of 24 uh, 7. They used to call it, we're going to wake him up and put him to sleep. That means they're going to be there, you're going to have a 24 hour cover. And that's been for decades. That I don't mind that. See, that means that you got to look at how good that is. Can't nobody sneak up on me and do nothing to me unless it's in their cards. Because if anybody get to sneaking around, they're going to show themselves so they'll run off. You know what I mean? If they're going to break in, if they're going to, if somebody come, they got a pistol, they're going to shoot in the window, they're going to show up. They said, anybody shoot that nigga, it'll be us. That's the way they feel about it. And they can't do that because if anything happens like that, everybody's going to know that they did it or they let it happen. It's just like the poor people in Oakland. You may not believe it, but I actually like them. I, I, in fact, I like all of our snitches. Uh, I mean, that one of collaborators and stuff. I like them all. I like them. I like I like their families. Uh, and they got to learn like anybody else. They have to learn. I think there is some learning going on. But you got to remember, they've been well-educated, so they're slow. They're slow. The longer they was in school, the slower they're going to be to come around. They can't help it. That's just look. When boss man get hold to you, he's going to slow you down to his speed. And his speed is slow. So that no matter how fast you're going, he can go faster than you. Because he's going to make you jump through his hoops. you got to go through my test, da, 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 da. Whatever it is, once he get control of that, the only way he can't control you is when you got your own schedule. And you know his schedule, and you know pretty soon you can reach a level of freedom. You're not talking about artificial freedom like... Uh, freedom of speech and all that dumb stuff. You don't have none of that. And who needs it anyway? You have to have the power to influence your own environmental circumstances. That's freedom. 
The more you do that, the more freedom you have. The more uh, ability that you have, that's what power and freedom power is to ability to, you know, to influence your environment. Same thing about uh, ability. So it's power and it's freedom and liberation and all that stuff. Liberation means that like Huriyat, they used to say Uhuru in the black days. Uh, they didn't know it was an Arabic word from Huriyat, meaning uh, liberation and freedom. But uh, Eastern words, even with the, in the African context, has a much greater uh, spirit of like, if you look up Uhuru, U-H-U-R-U, it'll tell you freedom, liberation, and stuff like that. But it means more than that. In the Arabic con context, Huriyat is a type of uh, freedom from anything that holds you down. To be able to expand your capacity to evolve. Now that's the 15th meaning. It's not the second or third or fourth meaning. So Huriyat, in our context of freedom and liberation, is to be able to manipulate the battle space. In order to liberate the battle space, what we are saying is, is that we want to administer new parts to our people, the part they have never played. See, boss man can't give you a part. He's not going to give you a part as the hero. Is da, 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 da. He can't do that. He has to be the hero. There's, there's just, there ain't going to be no more heroes here but me. The best you can get is a supporting actor and maybe you get killed in the last scene. Right. You know, you used to get killed in the first scene, Negroes, but now they let them develop their character where everybody's sad. But uh, boss man is going to be the hero or boss lady is going to be the hero. They, they don't. Uh, and that's great because you're playing in their production. So you know how it's uh, like the old story about the lion uh, is talking to the little cubs or what have you. And, and uh, no, the lion hunter is talking about how great the lion was, how great the challenge was, and what have you. And uh, he finally uh, won the day. So the young child is asking the, the, the parent, uh, Daddy, why doesn't the lion ever win? Yeah, it's the same old thing. He said, "Yeah, when when he tells a story, he'll when he learn when he can tell a story, he'll win." Okay, we're telling the story. I want you to understand how panic boss man is, because we having a good time. You can tell. Look here, we having a good time. Boy, I laughed so hard when that lady said, I want to talk to you about insurance. And by the way, who, uh, how old are you and what type, who insures you? I said, I'm insured by God. <laughs> see that peck of wood? I can see that white lady now. You know, yeah, I can see her face now. I mean, she was just stunned and hung up. And there was nothing to say. But it was to me, I'm telling her the truth. Yeah. <laughs> what is your insurance? I'm insured by God. You know, I'm not going to use a lie because it's, it's in a joking thing. Like, so I can use. So I'm insured by God. So anyway. <laughs> uh if not, let's look at the the global dummies on international display. The USA and the Zionists. 
see, there's a change in the atmosphere about the Zionists. They can do anything they want to anybody, and it's all right. Nobody else can do that, not even the Americans, but the Zionists can. So everybody's looking at the Zionists now. And then the Americans, they're thinking that these people must be on dope. The American, I mean, if you watch, listen to their news, that it won't sound like. But everybody else's news, when you look in India, the Arab news, everybody else, they're laughing at uh, the United States. And Europeans, they're saying, what's wrong with Europeans? Because this is the question they ask. They say they're making them bear all the burden. And they're not doing They got their own oil supply over here, da, 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 da. And they telling them, we don't want you to do And they're doing it anyway because they're buying Russian oil. And they buying them, buying the ruble first. And then, hey, man, uh... So Putin then kicked off a new thing. If you got control of market, you make people buy your currency. What does it do? The ruble is up in the roof now. The value of the ruble is up, way up. So the real uh, in Iran, uh, Tomans, whatever, will probably be up because Iran will say, well, yeah, I'll sell y'all all the oil you want. First, they'll build up their stockpile of money. And then Russia and China have been planning this a long time. They have, yes. Why is that? Because they've been buying all that gold. Right. That's it. Yeah. That's right. They've been saving all that gold. So they got, they got all that gold. So you can turn your flips and do anything you want. They got more gold than anybody. And they've been packing it away because both of them knew. And the world is acting, look, you don't hear on the Eastern news or nothing anymore about this terrible invasion. Everybody is saying the inv- those Americans set up the Russians and they trying to stir World War Three, and Putin is from a paranoid maniac to a nice guy. Now. Yeah, yeah, no, and, and the longer it go on, and he ain't gonna, uh, he's not fighting their war. He's not biting at this and biting at that. We'll take care of that. So, hey, it just so happens that the Chinese, the Russians, uh, in the last decades, the Chinese were sharing silkworm missiles with uh, Iran in the early 80s. Yeah, okay. That's what they call it then. Now the stuff, they, good God, that was a while back. So anyway, Russia, after what they did in Libya, they saw, Russia saw they, they hitting at our people, their allies. So they said, well, we let you slide on Libya, but we, you can't hit nobody else. And Syria, we fixing to straighten that up. Within two weeks of bombing in 2015, uh, the, the U.S. had been bombing for two years, so-called Daesh, yeah. and in two weeks, the Russians straighten the whole thing out. So we can see what that was. But the historical uh, the, whole, the historical reality is clear to everybody now. Like uh, we've been proven right over and over and over and over again and that's hard for, for the, that's hard for everybody to take. It's hard for boss man it's harder for the Zionists. It's hard for the Muslims. Yeah. Well, you got to think about it. The Muslims have all set, tried to avoid us 
although you could tell that, that we had we have some people that like us okay they want they don't want to be on front page with you but you could tell yeah uh, i got to go you know so that's fine uh, you know one thing we found out as the years go by never test people beyond their capacity one of the mistakes i made in jahiliya you know uh, it was like uh, uh, say with your family members, uh, your wife and everybody. If I'm down with this, you got to be down with me. You got to be down with this. You don't have no choice. And uh, you put people in a position where if you had any sense, you would not press people beyond their commitment. Their own. You can't do that. <laughs> well, no, you can't, you can't press. You, Shoot, you're 25 years. So how old are you? Well, 29 now. 29? Man, you lucky to learn that. That that people, I wasn't, no, I, I 29, I still had a little bit of, not much, but a little bit of that. You with me, that old dumb Negro stuff. You with me, then I'm down with it. You down with me. I think I had learned by 29 from experience. From experience, it, you can't yeah, you can't make people go beyond there. What is their level of commitment? And never carry people beyond their level of commitment. This is one of the rules of movement. Okay. So the hero on display, uh, uh, I just don't want to say it, but it's me. I'm the hero in this. Uh, the, the, the United States government and the Zionists, ain't nobody ever even thought of treating them like we treat them. They ain't even thought of it. And still be alive, that means we didn't use a special thing on them. And we know we have it. Ain't no like, uh, uh, we got to guess at it. No, we know what we have, are using. We know how long we use it, and we know when to change up, when to flip the schedule. We have to or we wouldn't be here. Yeah. I was just listening about Sunni Yada Alakoli. He's just getting out. He's 85 years old. He's been in the penitentiary 49 years. Other brothers have been in close to that. The brothers down in New Orleans, he was in prison for 42 years. They let him go the day before he died because he had cancer. They wasn't going to let him go out and run around. They had the, the, all the stuff on his ears and nose and everything. Is he ready to die? Yes, he is. You sure? Yes. Let him go. He didn't even get a chance to get home. He died. Okay. We have our other friends. Uh, they... You know, just like to say uh, you have friends that's been locked up, say, 20 years. For the movement, if you tell somebody 20 years that's out here walking around, they think that's a long time. Hell, it is a long time. When you got to do it, 20 years? When you come out of penitentiary after 20 years, the whole world has changed. I mean, you like Man, this is deep, and it do be deep. And uh, I remember, like, uh, I think the longest stretch I did at one time was about four years. Mm, I haven't done. I don't have no. I I get lucky. I I did all of my youth in prison when I wasn't doing nothing. I'd just be riding bicycles and. Uh, Going to parties, so I wasn't doing nothing. I was learning the system. Whether it's the Army, the Navy, Marine, those systems, the prisons are part of the system. The people in that system are the same all over. They even call them E-4s, E this, that, and other, right? Yeah. If you're in the Navy, you're an E something or other. But you're the number. If you're a warden, you're an E-14. If you're a general, you're a... F or Z or uh, something, 14. Same K 
category. You're just in one part of the, another part of the system, right? And once you've been in the system, they can flip you from, you can go from the Navy to the Army and not miss a skip. Just, well, what do we call these things now? That's all. You don't have to learn nothing new because you're used to the system. Okay. So what we offer is uh, to the Negro is hero status. The Negro has never played the hero before. But it ain't going to be easy for him. It's easy for me now. But it ain't. <laughs> uh, I understand where the people are at. Uh, they have to look at the world, look at their lives, look at their family, and they got to think. If I stay with boss man, what is my family going to look like by the time they... Hmm. It's not going to look too good. It's not going to look too good. But that's a chance. That's a... That's a, a risk. You know what they say, the greater the risk, the greater the opportunity. But it is a risk to jump out of a boss man's house into a freedom house. Okay. But if boss man's house is burning up, it's not a risk. It's a risk to stay in boss man's house when it's on fire. And you take a survey with everybody and say, is boss man's house on fire? They say, yep, it's on fire. You go to the fire department and say, is the house on fire? It's on fire. Uh, you go to the social network, she says, it's on fire. Is boss man's house on fire? Yes, it is. It's just how long will it take to burn, that's all. How long will it before it's consumed? But it's on fire. Oh, the house... Is on fire and uh, it's spreading. So pretty soon, the roots, the doors will be engulfed in flames, and you won't be able to get out. That's what people say. So uh, that's the way it is now. Boss man's house is, is on fire, and. Uh, it looked like he's not learning anything. He's not taking any. Uh, he's not taking any advice, and he's not. Uh, I can't let the niggers help me. The niggers would. That would be admitting we were wrong, and that's bad. So. But it ain't nothing new about it. All history, you know, when you read the Quran and the Hadith, it all is very familiar. The people said the same thing. So, like, if a guy was just guessing about the Quran, pretty soon he would know this book is right, man. This is right. Okay. So I'm going to speed up because the discussion today is... Uh, Serialization, and uh, I want to go a little bit on uh, a few things from the uh, let's call it uh, the to do list. One of the things we want to talk about is that uh, our antagonists are professional failures, professional failures, they're not like uh. Loose, uncoordinated, you know, accidental. They are professional failures. Everybody and all the groups that came out against us, they're all up against the wall looking stupid. Whether it's Abdul Malik out there in Oakland, uh, it was idiocy and arrogance that... Uh, we used to refer to them, and Sister Bahia and them all as high school Negroes. We refer to them now as elementary school Negroes. Why? Because we have grown and they haven't. They're still doing the same thing. That's why money disappears still. How's people going to, after the third, the second or third time, anybody would know where the 
because who could have access? Anyway, it's a long story. So uh, all we do is raise the thing, and we're not going to... We're not going to panic because, see, there are certain things that's going on. We realized the pattern a long time ago. You know, I kind of made dua years ago, about 40 years ago, about my sons. They were still young then, and they were right in Oakland. That's like being in D.C., and we were right on the main street, and our family is all... So I asked a lot to keep them alive long enough till they can see what's going on. Because they were teenagers at that time. So a lot kept them alive. And then when I realized how what was all behind it, about 20 years ago, they was all looking at, uh, both of them had photo albums. And my oldest son had photo album of, uh, and I, I had say even some of the photos of uh, when you take kids on their sixth grade uh, graduation thing, right? We went over to Angel Island, and one of their little friends had a long natural, and he could stand up and turn flips, you know. And uh, I said, whatever happened to so he says, dead. So all the kids in the sixth grade class was dead. You know, and uh, don't get up to where the niggas got grown. They was all dead, and they were dying at that time. Same thing with my youngest son. So after looking at their photo albums, I realized what had happened. Boss man, we worked good together as a team, even though they wasn't turning flips about Islam and stuff. But they was there with me in the masjid. We lived in the masjid together. And we slept in the masjid. I took them all around the country doing lectures and everything. And uh, so the government realized this guy got a team. And they, because they refer, we referring to so-and-so, dad, so-and-so acting like a B-word person. I said, I know I picked it up. But why did you say that? I did it. My youngest son, he, he said, Dad, so-and-so's a police. I said, uh, you're right. I said, how do you know he's a police? He said, well, the people that come and they speak. And he said, when he was given, he gave a beautiful speech. But when he was speaking, I dress him up in a police uniform. And if it fits, he's a police. I said, well, uh, but he was 12, 13, 14. I said, well, you're right, but uh, that uh, technique, uh, that's for you only. I mean, you know, I, but it was right. He would dress him up. Allah gave him that the thing because he was sure right all the time. How do you know? Because I want to ask, well, how do you know? So and so. Well, he leans next to the door and he creeps around. I said, that's right. That's Osama, all right, from up in Denver. Yeah, he's creepy, Dad. I said, yeah, that's, that's him. I said, I knew he was the police the day I saw him. That's why I asked him to come here to Oakland. Because I knew who he was. Okay. Anyway, uh, we have... Uh, a lot and blessed our community, a lot and blessed us because uh, all those things that take everybody else down, meanness, madness, arrogance, you know, they go around hurting people. Well, we don't do that. And the proof of it was that uh, test in California some time back oh, when I was assaulted in the masjid by uh, Mukhtar and Khadijah. That was, a, that was a seal on everything. I knew by the way I responded, and everybody else knew too. That was his last hold card. I mean, we got to get him. And because, see, he signed up for this. Abdul Malik Nim had uh, 
kind of backed up and he said, Abdul Malik made a mistake. He's telling me, he said he should have stuck with your behind. And uh, so he was telling me, he's talking to me like, I'm going to bring you down, big guy, you know, like in the movies. Uh, the dumb police is telling the, the criminal. The only thing is, I'm not the criminal. They are. And they don't realize it that, hold it, I'm not the criminal. You are. And we're not fitting into your category in anything you use. Uh, when I was always trying to always use white girls, I think I'd have asked 500 white girls about marriage. But I know is the thing. They don't have them there for marriage. They have them there as a trap. So that's why I say, hey, hey, Jane, would you like to get married? Uh, 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 I think about it. At UC Berkeley, hey, girl, you want to like get married? Now, I ain't asked that Negro woman. So now they would thank them dumb people. They would be thinking this nigga here just love white girls. Well, actually, I was celibate for 15 years. I couldn't be too crazy about, uh, you know, certain things. Or else I, you can't go that long. And everybody's sniffing and feeling around. They said, I know this nigga pulling something because it don't happen. And I said, no, that's the way it's going on. So anyway, uh, that was a white girl trap. Why? Because I'm a Negro. And that's what they're going to do. That's automatically, and in my age period, that's the, the best trap. And for everybody else, it's as good a trap as any because the hadith is clear. The greatest trap or the greatest da 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 for men is women. Okay. Can you imagine a Negro got 14 years and more celibacy? And they, they definitely don't believe it. It's not possible. It ain't possible. Niggas don't do that. And then they send it. Everybody they send at that time is euros mostly. You know, because they think that's what uh, you know. Yeah, a euro called me in the middle. Of, well, they didn't use all euros. A one-year-old lady called me. She was the healthiest euro that I had saw up to that time. Now they got a lot of healthy white women. But in those days, way back, white women were straight up and down. And now they kind of filling out a little. They're not doing too bad. I mean, you know, I'm just saying. I don't be paying no attention to them. But they have kind of like shapely bodies now. I guess they eating all that food. But they... Uh, this lady was the healthiest euro I had seen in a long time, healthy by shapely. I just got a penitentiary, and so, so they knew I was gonna bite at that. I was no, and then she pops up a year or two later with John or somebody. Before that, she called me in the midnight. And it's pouring down rain. They know that late at night and rainy weather make you kind of funny. I can, so it's the old song, I like to make love in the wee wee hours. Uh, when it's pouring down rain. That's what the old people, so they figure I'm just like them. Uh, would you come pick me up? I said, I can't come pick you up. Uh, send you a cab around there somewhere. I don't know. Uh, I can't come. Do you know what it would look like if I'm here it's midnight and riding around with a white woman in the car? What do you think? Uh, uh, no, I just want you. I said, no, indeed. I sent a cab around there to send you somewhere where you want to go. And uh, one lady, when my son was 16, I remember because he was 16 and we used to sleep in the back room. It used to be an office. So the phone was a wall phone, and it was outside the bedroom. So I go and answer the phone, a pay phone. We had a pay phone. Uh, 
you know, Imam Musa, uh, I look like Imani. Imani was an Ethiopian model a long time ago. I said, well, that's good. So then she said, well, I would like to describe my vagina to you. I said, sister, you can't call me here telling me about your vagina. And my son says, oh, dad, you could give me the letter to describe it. And so I popped him upside down. Well, he was 16. He was just, what, 16 years? Hey. Yeah, hey. Describe that boy to me, you know, <laughs> that girl, whatever it is. So it was funny. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, uh, but they was calling all the time because they knew we call late at night and we call when, uh, you know, the subnimal stuff. They did everything. It didn't work. None of it worked. None of, not one smidget of it worked. We know what they was doing and we carried ourselves well. Uh, we don't need no award for it, but they could give us a Negro, uh, you know, hold out, stand up award for uh, avoiding all traps and tricks and what have you for over a long period of time. They could give, if they make an award, they could give me the first one. Because ain't nobody else going to get it. That I know of. Niggas ain't going to get that award. Not the ones I know. They probably make some later on. But I haven't seen them. So now our team what we're trying to do is distribute hero parts for Negroes because they never, Negroes never play the part of a hero. This is the uh, snitch like Al, Al Sharpton. Whatever he's doing, everybody knows what he's doing. Jesse Jackson, messy Jesse, you know. Everybody knows when he comes up, uh, some people are cheering and happy, but they know who he is. Yeah, they know who he is. Okay. So we want to distribute parts that are different. Where the Negro is a real, the Negro lives out a life of a real life hero. That people can be proud of. Hey. Uh, they usually, if somebody has a little bit of, Pride, the people love him. They usually kill him or drag him. They do something to him pretty quick. Okay. Now, we already knew that. So we had, how did we stay here all this time? It was understanding boss man, that old Southern way back when. Southernism. And we used it effectively. Now it's too late. Now uh, they can't do nothing to to the, uh, my sons, because they 50, almost 60, they own up there, so they grown. My daughters, you could tell what they had told them, that uh, uh, even Fatima said to Dad, uh, if you was all of that, they would, uh, they would kill you. That's what their mama told them. So you got to help us to do whatever we want to your daddy to keep him at a certain level, or they're going to kill him. Why don't they do it? Okay, so I'm going to have a nice long talk with them when they get back from college and pretty soon. If they want it, but I just have to tell them uh, my side of the truth. They take it or leave it. But they're alive, and they got the thing about my sons be alive for one reason, my daughters be alive for another. They can't do nothing to them. If they even have an accident, mamas is funny about the daughters, and they would be they would go crazy, and they couldn't hold it, so they'd have to finish her off too, you know, fast. If something happened, I mean, an accident, it don't have to be. They got to look out for them, because if anything happened, it looked like boss man might have just told me he going to look out for him, but he didn't do it. And how could that happen? All that stuff going around in their mind, it might be a real accident. They're not going to 
they're not going to follow it like that. They're going to follow it up another way. Uh, certain emotions. So everybody else is trapped but me. They're all trapped. Ain't nothing they can do about it. But remember, they're not that smart anyway. They're not too smart. They wouldn't. They were smart. They could read the signs of history and da 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 da, da. and uh, uh, o'clock morality. They wouldn't do certain things. Uh, well, they do certain things, and but we still offering them a chance. Here's a chance we will see because we we're in charge of the dialogue. We're in charge of the story line. We could make it say what we want. So, they could have started out as a low life, a tattletale, and a stooge. And um, people aren't used to they used to the white man making those decisions, not the Negro. So it take will it takes time for them to digest this stuff. Uh, they had no idea this would carry on this long. They out. They had no idea that they would run around at all the universities and everywhere, and then be stopped with this. That is there. What the boss man offered them, it ain't gonna. It ain't working. It ain't gonna work. It come back to us. And see, we have to know what we're dealing with. That's what we're dealing with, and we know what we're dealing with. And we also know that there's nothing they can do about it. They can't do nothing to anybody. Number one, if somebody got hold to 5% of the DVDs that we would have, they would have the whole story. So they don't have to get them all. And then if they get one or two, they're going to go around making collections. Do you have any of those DVDs? Now, most of the people that got them are like, kind of, not agents, but that, those type of people. And we know that they play certain things uh, that uh, don't go too far. It's no problem. They always forget one or two. That's a movie, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. It was about the crazy house in California. Yeah. It was a cra it was really about a crazy how Backerville, that's what it was about in California. Yeah, and the one flew over the cuckoo's nest, me and one got away. Okay, this, uh, here's the thing. Over the years, whether it's uh informers for Iran and da 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 da. Over the years, 5 or 10% of those people are going to be double agents. They're going to be on your team. You don't need everybody on your team. All you need is 1% will do, but you're going to get 5 or 10. Easy. Easy. It's, it's people on both teams. Like out of the Iranians, I know people that are on both teams. They're on that team and they're on that. And uh, whichever one they own, that's for real, that's good. But I know they're double agents. Okay. That's why some of the people that you used to hear about a few months back, you don't hear about them much anymore. Yeah, you just don't hear about them. And uh, who, who's they liking? Uh, who's they... Did they help? Who do they send over here to uh, try to get a different view on things or get you to say that things are different? They're so dumb, they're like Americans. Some people believe if we can get you to say that this is the historical thing, they think you've been so accurate throughout the history that that's the way it'll happen because you said it. The dummies. No, they. I'm telling you, they believe that. Uh, yeah, but it's, if they can convince me, remember a lot of things, seeing is believing, da, 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 they believe a lot of that stuff. 
So if they can get you to convince yourself that certain things are true, if they can, can convince you to like the National Negro, or if they can convince you, they send people by here all the time, representatives of the National Negro. And a National Negro has a certain age on them and they want to turn it over to somebody that they could trust. And they know where you, your history and they would rather for, because they don't trust each other, definitely. They don't trust them. You think they trust their ministers? <laughs> Good God Almighty. Uh, brother. So people are getting ready to pass away. Oh, they're 85, 90, almost. They're getting up there. What are we going to do with this organization? We've got to do something with it. Why not? Big brainy idea. Turn it over to a leader has a high standard of morality and we know basically what he do. He changed it uh, to a Sunni Islamic type movement with real Islamic flavor and all of that. And uh, that's what he do. And that's why people sit right here and they talk crazy. That's their job. You can probably think about who I'm talking about. If a nigga come by here and pop down $10,000, you think he just, either the government sent him directly or he, somebody else sent him. It don't make no difference. I see it that way. That's the way it looks. Just doing the calculations add up like that. Either the government or the National Negro them sent him. And they're trying to figure out what to do with the movement. That's one of the elements. We may, we may not be 100% accurate, but we're in the ballpark on this. That's what they're doing now. Or what do we do with the movement? Do we destroy it? Do we uh, sp split it up into five different groups? Or what do we do? They got to figure that out. Because so-and-so, uh, he go up to his ranch every week and he's going to die up there on that ranch. That zillion dollar ranch. It don't make, you know, you know so you, we have to have ideas about who these people are, where they come in. If they come by and they do certain things, number one, they're from the government. If they do certain things, they're definitely from the government. Okay. And What's the purpose of it? Well, we'll figure it out in five or ten years. We'll have to figure it out now. We're not doing any of that type of thing. Everything we do is feasibility law. If they turn anything over to us, we're changing it from boogly book to the Quran and Sunnah. And uh, they'll have to uh, learn how to adjust to get that type of Negro to adjust to the truth is going to be a, be a big deal. Not that they're thugs and all of that type of stuff. Anyway, uh, you when you're in something, you get a feel for, uh, you know, what people do. But you never know. You can change, uh, you can uh, uh, you but we not going to waste too much time with that. Okay. I'm going to speed up here. Again, we're going to revert back to battle space for a minute. Going to revert back to a heroes on display. That means that we can display heroes and the parts that they play would be heroic. They would just have to play it. And uh, those are things that are right in, on, in the environment now. And they'll slip up on people, but it won't be no surprise to me. Uh, 
I have here global dummy on uh, international display. Yeah, the U.S. and the Zionists, that, that is. They're the global dummy. They look like it, the global dummy, and they are, and all the stuff to go with it is global dummyism. But in the serialization progress process, number one, we want to be organized and focused. Organized mean that you have to have, if you're going to get the truth, our organization deal with regularity and systemization, all of that stuff. So we'll be in that process again. And focused, we can't do everything, but if we're focused on the things that we do, we can do them well. That's by staying uh, focused. Uh, a comprehensive non-Hollywood version of black history, I wouldn't approach it. Uh, that's something we'll talk about. Comprehensive non-Hollywood version of black history. You notice they throw up a few movies like Black Panther. Not that the new Black Panther where they got over in Africa, but the Black Panther from back in the 80s, 90s, something like that. When they showing the Black Panther Party in Oakland and all that. And the people, I heard so-and-so on the thing the other day. In fact, Sister Bahia called me and said uh, so-and-so was on the uh, WPFW. And uh, uh, we were very good friends for years. He even said a thing. He says, send my, those tapes to my mother or something or other. Yeah. Okay. But those tapes were already in the mail. And when he got them, when he heard them, he realized I knew who he was. The ones that he heard before, they wasn't that detailed. But the CDs and DVDs that came after the one that he was asking for and that they when he looked at him, he realized that I knew who he was. That's all. That's why he ain't calling and saying nothing. You already know. I know who he is. And it, but it wouldn't make no difference. But the government is going to leave one of their people in different spots to keep an eye on everybody. It's okay, it ain't no big deal. Uh, so he has a dilemma. He's not going to mention too much about me because that was kind of secretive, but also uh, not to give me too much notoriety. And he never did. They would have these other guys running around here, and they'd have certain people coming over here to collect money. That's okay. We could have helped them, but they didn't want it. Okay. Uh, the other thing about famous people dying over in Africa at a certain time, and they're there in engineering, and you don't know how they uh, lack of. Let's say Geronimo Pratt or something. Eh. Even if somebody give you ten thousand dollars and you're still a government agent and you got a notice to get rid of him, you're gonna get rid of him. I'm not saying this is. A, I'm just saying this is stuff that happens. Uh, this is a dangerous. Uh, Endeavor, but we try to keep the humor. Uh, we've mastered that. That uh, you're not going to scare anybody, so you go scare somebody else. We believe in kindness and love, compassion, and optimism and humor. Why? Because they try to make you mean. If they make you mean, you're not going to. You, you can have a million people in this uh, finished because you're mean. Yeah, you're mean, and they, they lost. If you, okay. We talked about serialization. Uh, 
we'll wait to Juma to. Uh, right now, we're going through a systematic stage. We're preparing for California. We're preparing for uh, things we're going to do here. Uh, we're going to do our schedule ourselves will look like uh, writing articles in the morning, doing work on our little place there, and uh, other little stuff. Uh, so we're back in the, we're we're in the groove now. Yeah, we're in the groove and. Uh, it comes easy and natural. So the things that was hard last year, they're not hard this year, like cutting the grass. I wouldn't do it last year. I wouldn't wouldn't do it. I couldn't do it. Not this year. So I got to do just enough to get the physical fitness out of it, walk and push anymore. Well, I don't have to run. I just fix my day all around. Maybe I don't like A Street too much going up that hill, but I do it anyway. No, no, it's it's healthy for you. It's healthy for you. So, but one thing down there that uh, that that lot down, uh, if you check it from now and then. I do. I check it at least once a week. Okay, for clippings, for stuff hanging over and all. Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect. That's perfect. Uh, the rest of it, uh, I'll uh, I'll do fifty twenty one. I just. Uh, because uh, I feel better this year. Yeah, I feel whole, you know, else I wouldn't be able to uh, to do nothing. So Allah's in charge. Uh, the last thing I'd like to wish everybody is uh, we just had a nice Ramadan. And uh, I hope that everybody has a wonderful life. Yeah. I hope everybody has a wonderful life. I, I really do. Uh, I'm not going to say I uh, wish you could have the type of life that I have or than had, but uh, it's been pretty exciting and pretty nice, too. I mean, you know, to go all around the world and deal with all the movements and all of that stuff, that is uh, pretty, it's not too bad. Not too bad at all. And then the period that we're in now is a serious evolutionary period. And to be able to slap the Zionists around and the Americans too, that's wonderful. And we don't have to do it in the future. We've already done it. So everybody's afraid of the old mean Americans. He'll bomb you and kill you. And the Zionist definitely is some mean folks. Boy, I tell you, this is not mean as anybody. And that's the old Zionist. So we're going to give him a special humiliating whipping. And we're going to make fun of him because he's so mean he don't like nobody. Uh, he call it disrespecting. Well, we're going to diss him. All, that's all we're going to do is make fun of him. Yeah, just make fun of the old scientists. Ain't nothing he can do. You know, he can't do nothing. Yeah, because anyway, that's a long story about the feds. You know, you keep pushing that thing pretty soon, you'll get a couple of them. They're human beings after all. You get a couple of feds, you know. They might play around with you, but pretty soon, it, who cares? We're not in a church social here, we're in a doggone the meanest game in the world. The world is to, the colonial, murderous, blowing up everybody game. That's what the game we we're in the the meanest game in world history. So I mean if we get a few bruises here and there, we ain't, you know. Uh and I'll close with this. Uh I'm only 77 now, and most of the people made it to 25. Some even got old, like 30, stuff like that. So, uh, and what looks bad to y'all is fine to me. Like, I actually like this. I like what I'm doing. 
And if I had a zillion dollars, I would live the same way I live now. Because you couldn't tell the difference I live. I sleep on the floor or that uh, on a platform, and I, that's what I do. And I don't want nothing else. And I don't need any better food. They got more food down there than I can eat. Right now, I can't eat it all, right? So, uh, what the heck? Anyway, longevity, thanks to Allah. The uh, ability to understand the endurance period and to put everything in the focus is just like I told the white lady. You was about insurance. I said, yeah, I'm insured by God. <laughs> she hung up. <laughs> so thank y'all very much. Okay.